morning, grade fours. It is Tuesday, another week to learn. Luckily, this is this week is a very short week. Um, we've I'm only with you for science today, tomorrow, and Thursday. We have got a public holiday on Friday, and we had one yesterday. And I hope that you really had a good long weekend, and you did something creative, or something productive, or something exciting. But I hope that you're taking it easy, and that you and your family are doing great and your health and your safe um this this lesson that we are going to be doing today is an exciting one because we're starting a brand new topic but before we get into our topic i'm going to share my joke of the day with you okay let's go so why did the student eat his homework because the teacher said it was a piece of cake <laughs> i must say as a teacher i have said that to my students quite uh, often um but luckily nobody's eating homework or not that i know of i've heard of a dog eating homework believe it or not that has actually happened um but actually eating their own homework no i've seen many food stains on homework but i have seen <laughs> anyways remember grade fours that if you've got any questions um please email them to grade four at worksheetcloud.com Okay, so as I said, we're starting a brand new section today and we are going into the world of energy. Energy is all around us and it's so important to know what it is, to learn about it and to, to know that everything that we do involves energy. Okay, and so this whole section that we're going to be, I'm going to take you through this week and possibly next week is all to do with energy okay i'm also going to refer back to some of the topics and things that we spoke about in our previous section on life and living because i did refer to energy quite a few times when i was talking about life and living so keep those ears open because i might ask you questions throughout the lesson right so today specifically we're going to be looking at two aspects we're going to look at what exactly is energy and how do we define energy and secondly we are going to look at the uses of solar energy now i've spoken about solar energy before when we spoke about what plants need in order to live and grow and flourish um, and so we're going to specifically look at solar energy today okay now before we get into our lesson i want to ask a scenario question i give you a very heavy box now it can anything can be in this particular box anything that you enjoy maybe it's food maybe it is books maybe just a box of sand absolutely anything is in this box but i want you to imagine that this is quite heavy and i say to you right i would like you to take this box to a friend of yours that lives down the road the question is how are you going to how many ways can you take this heavy box to your friend how many different ways can you do that okay so think about it maybe you want to pause the video and have a quick think how are you going to do that so possibly maybe you thought about um carrying or pushing the box that could be one of the things that you thought about maybe you thought about putting it in a wheelbarrow and wheeling the box down the road that is another um, thing that maybe you thought about. Maybe you thought about strapping it to your bicycle and cycling this box down the road to your friend. Or maybe you thought, okay, I need some assistance with this heavy box. So let's put it in a car, on a bus, a van, or a scooter or something and getting somebody else to help us and assist us with this box. Now, with all of these possible scenarios, they all bring me to one question. What do all of these have in common? No matter what scenario you have thought of or chosen, what do they all have in common? They all use energy, right? And that is basically it. They all use energy. Energy is all around us and we need energy all the time. So what exactly is energy? How would we define it since it's all around us? What is it, right? So energy means the ability to do work. We, in order to do work or have the potential to do work, we need energy. And that doesn't just apply to living things, it's also non-living things. Anything that, um, anything uses energy, either has the ability to um, do work or is actually doing work. And we get energy specifically. Now, when I say we, I talk about us as humans, us as animals. Animals, we get energy from the foods that we eat. All energy from our foods 
come from the sun okay um, and that begins with plants which I've spoken about but that's I'm going to bring up a little bit later so in detail now let's just start with this energy from the sun now we all know that energy from the sun is known as solar energy i've spoken about it before how we need solar energy and this solar energy that is emitted from the sun actually comes in rays um, and these particular rays they travel to the earth and these rays are either one of two things. These rays are either reflected, these solar energy rays are either reflected off our atmosphere and they're not absorbed into the atmosphere and our earth, or these rays are absorbed into the atmosphere and, and our earth and they warm up our earth, okay? So that is quite important to know that these, the energy from the sun comes in rays. Now the sun as well, just to um, go back to the second point over here, the sun is, for those of you that didn't know, is actually a giant ball of gas, very hot gas, and it's actually a star. It is our biggest star in our solar system. And so being our biggest star, and, and in our particular solar system, we get this energy from the sun the solar energy um, and the solar energy as i said travels in rays we then these rays that are absorbed um, into the atmosphere and into our earth it warms up our earth and by having a warm earth that allows different life to exist on our earth okay so it's quite important to start with the sun and speak about the energy and where it comes from and how it gets to us now if we have a look at the different uses of solar energy so we need solar energy and i'm going to continuously refer to energy from the sun as solar energy because it is the more accurate and scientific word that we use to describe energy from the sun so we first use it for light and warmth so obviously during the day we needed to see um and lighten up our earth as well as to warm our earth and obviously in different parts of the earth it's a lot warmer and cooler in certain places but we definitely need it for light and warmth we also need solar energy for plants to grow as you all know or i hope you remember that we, i have previously spoken about photosynthesis and what is photosynthesis it is the process by which plants make their own food and solar energy is one of the components that a plant needs in order to make its own food which is very important now remember plants make their own food we then need plants in order for us to grow um, when we either eat plants or we eat other animals okay but all of that comes from the plant and from the plant that comes from the solar energy from the sun which is so important right now, now it, we come to a part of the lesson where I'm going to explain and go into a little bit more detail of the solar energy and the plants and talk about how it fits in in a food chain. Now, if we look at the word food chain and we break it up, we talk about, we immediately we start to think, okay, we're going to refer to food and it must be in a particular chain. Now, you think about a chain that links together and that's basically what this concept of a food chain is. Okay, now remember, the reason why we're talking about food chains is that a food chain and all life on this planet always starts off with solar energy and we need solar energy. Now, a food chain is the transfer of energy from the sun to humans ultimately. Okay, and how the transfer of energy from the sun is then transferred from one organism to the next. Right, so have a, let's have a look at one particular example. Now, in a food chain, we represent it horizontal, and we show the different organisms and how energy is transferred from one organism to another. So if we have a sweet corn over here, we know that a sweet corn is a plant. It is able to grow, and we get sweet corn, and it starts up with the energy from the sun. Then, from the sweet corn, we can see then what happens is an arrow that points to a mouse, a little field mouse. This is showing not that the um, sweet corn eats a field mouse, because you know that is not correct. This shows that energy is then transferred 
from the sweet corn to the field mouse when the field mouse eats it. Okay, then uh, an owl comes along and eats, because it's a predator, eats the mouse. And you can see, so the energy from the mouse, that, that energy that that mouse got the energy from the sweet corn, then gets transferred to the owl. So you can see that it, when we talk about a food chain that exists horizontally, it consists of organisms with arrows in between. The arrows represent how energy is transferred from one organism to another. And I'm going to talk about it now in, in a little bit more detail. So you'll always find a few chains. Food chains exist in various different habitats and ecosystems. And food chains show not only how um, we see also how life different organisms do sort of eat different other organisms and species but more specifically we we use food chains to examine how energy is transferred from one organism to the other and like i said you'll always see these arrows you'll always see arrows and so arrows um represent the transfer of energy so whether it is a tree and a deer the the energy is transferred from a tree to a deer and then a deer to a lion or from flowers to small fish then from small fish to larger fish and then from larger fish to birds that eat um, remember that arrows in a food chain show the transfer of energy and that energy originally started with solar energy from the Sun right so it's important to note that Right. Now, where else can we use uh, solar energy? Where else do we see an example of solar energy? Well, we also see it with fossil fuels. Now, either some of you have heard the word fossil fuels before, or maybe it is a brand new concept to you. If we look at the two words, I always sit and think, okay, break up the term fossil fuels. A fossil, what is a fossil? A fossil refers to something um, an, or an organism should I say that was once alive that was once living okay and that particular organism can be a plant or it can be an animal now that fossil fuel um, so that's the word fossil fuel we if the moment that we think about fuel we think about fuel that is needed for um, something to do work so a fuel for an engine to run um, we need fuel to something that we we add to something else in order for work to happen that's the best way that i sort of can explain fossil fuels now if we put the two together we come up with this millions of years ago plants and animals used energy from the sun to grow once these organisms died they got buried by the earth and over time with added pressure and heat fossil fuels were made right so just to explain that again so years and years and years ago millions of years ago plants and animals that used to live on this planet so prehistoric times when they died their bodies obviously fell to the ground and then they got buried by rocks and dirt over time and obviously more and more as time passes they get further down and the further that they go down in uh, towards the core of our earth becomes very hot so temperature rises, the pressure increases, and throughout for many, many years, millions of years, those um, fossils or those plants and animals then start to change with that added pressure and heat. They change into three different forms. They, can, they change into coal, they change to oil, or they change to natural gas. And those are the three things that we actually use today. We use coal today um, in our power stations, we burn coal to get electricity. We use oils um, to fuel our cars and trucks and transport vehicles and natural gases as well that are also used in many different forms. So through these are the three fossil fuels that we refer to, coal, oil and natural gas. And remember that fossil fuels all started with solar energy from the sun. Right. And so I want you to um, just to sort of recap, I want you to remember how important solar energy is for our planet and how it has played such an important role for either what how we're using solar energy today or throughout time, what what role solar, solar energy has played in our planet. Um, remember that just to 
go through the main points of today's lesson. We spoke about energy. We defined energy as the ability to do work. Okay. We also spoke about the, the uses of solar energy, where solar energy comes from, how it's absorbed. It comes down as rays absorbed through the atmosphere and into our earth to warm up our planet and warm up our earth. We then spoke about how solar energy is so important for all living organisms, which we know, especially for plants. We then looked at food chains and why a food chain is so important because it shows the transfer of energy from one organism to another and then lastly we looked at fossil fuels and how dead well how plants and animals once used that solar energy the solar energy was still in that organism it died got buried added pressure and heat and transformed into our three, three fossil fuels coal, oil, and gas that we use today. Right, so that brings us to the end of our lesson. Remember that you can watch this video as often as what you can, um, or as often as what you want. I really hope that you do the attached activity with this lesson, um, all on energy. And more importantly, I just hope that you have such an awesome day. Um, remember to please just email all your questions through if you've got any questions. But I hope that you're staying warm. As you can see here, I'm in Gauteng. And Gauteng is a little bit chilly. I can definitely feel that autumn is, is hitting us and we might have a chilly winter up um, well, heading our way. So I hope that you're staying warm and that you're healthy and that you're safe, safe and that you're smiling wherever you are. But um, here's from me, Miss Kun. Remember, Hakuna Matata. Be kind to one another. Bye.